Jeremy Hunt. Madam Deputy Speaker, and it is a privilege to follow so many distinguished honourable members who themselves fought on the front line in Afghanistan. President Biden said this week that his only vital national interest in Afghanistan was to prevent a terrorist attack. Even if that is the case, both he and President Trump should be deeply ashamed. And I say this with great sadness because their actions have returned Afghanistan to the very government that harboured the 9-11 bombers. But the truth, Madam Deputy Speaker, is that 457 British servicemen and women did not lose their lives simply to reduce the terrorist threat, although they succeeded in that with great distinction. They paid their price in defence of a set of values, yeah. values that said that girls should be entitled to the same education as boys, that courts should be independent of clerics, that journalists should not be imprisoned if they speak truth to power. And if President Biden believes in those values, it is time the world heard it. Mm. And it's time we heard the same from the British government too. Yeah. <laughs> because although it is not possible to stay in Afghanistan without US support, we are the second power in a Western alliance that for all the failures of this week, not just Afghanistan, but Iraq, even Vietnam, that Western alliance has delivered more freedom, more prosperity, more respect for human rights across the globe than at any time in human history. And as my right honourable friend for Chingford and Woodford Green just said, those gains are now at risk, not just because of what happened this week, but because of the rise of an authoritarian and wealthy China that actively opposes the open societies we believe in. I give way to my honourable friend. I am very grateful to my right honourable friend. As a former Foreign Secretary, he is right to scrutinise our American allies, but will he acknowledge that the lack of support from European NATO partners, commensurate to their sizes, has also led to the situation we are facing today? He is absolutely right to say that. And it is not sustainable to ask America to spend 4% of its GDP on defence when the entirety of Europe spends no more than just over 2%. Uh, but what I would say is the threat we face is a threat that all of us face, that for 15 consecutive years the number of free countries in the world has been in decline. Since 2013, according to Reporters Without Borders, uh, press freedom has been in decline. And this decade, for the first time in any of our lifetimes, for the first time, the largest economy in the world will not be a democracy when China overtakes the United States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Madam Deputy Speaker, we are proud of our country, not just because of what we have achieved, not just because of our wealth, but because of what we stand for. And when those values are under threat, when the Atlantic Partnership appears to be fraying, we should be stopping at nothing to rebuild it. That means investing in our armed forces, yep. reversing the aid cut, developing our own technology, rebuilding our global alliances. And there's something we can do right now, which is to cut through the bureaucracy and make sure that we look after every single Afghani who took risks for themselves and their families because they believed in a better future and they trusted us to deliver it. Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm just coming to my conclusion. I want to say this. We cannot reverse what happened this week, but we can limit the damage and we can learn from what went wrong. That means not just grieving silently at the <laughs> actions of a close ally, but recognising the threats we face and roaring defiantly in defence of the values we share. Yeah. Yeah.